Welcome, this is Pastor Brian from Eden Church. Church, but not as you know it. We want you to join in, subscribe, tell somebody about this new platform that we are on. Church, but not as you know it, it's completely different. We're gonna have worship, the word, and we're gonna just have a wonderful time in the presence of God. You wanna join us uh, next time we're online. It's gonna be amazing. Welcome to our Sunday Celebration Resurrection Sunday service. We hope that you're going to have a great time with us today as you tune in. Uh, let me just tell you what's going to be happening. I'm going to be bringing you a word a bit later on, a word from the Lord. Uh, I just want you to tune in and hear what God uh, has to say. Um, before that, uh, we have some praise and worship led by you, Tunde, and Eden Praise. And we just want you to enjoy yourself, join in the singing and praising God. Uh, the presence of God is right where you are. But before we continue, let me just pray and open this session. Father, I thank you in the name of Jesus for who you are. Thank you for your death and your resurrection. I thank you, God, because through your death, through your resurrection, we are victorious. I pray today in the name of Jesus, every listener will be blessed in Jesus' name. God bless you. I hope you had a lovely Good Friday. Wow, what a mighty God we serve. Jesus died for us and he rose again. He didn't just stay in the grave. And that's the reason for our hope. I'm just going to do this song to say celebrate Jesus celebrates. He is risen and he lives forevermore. Come and celebrate with me. I'm just going to do that song to, together. Celebrate Jesus. Celebrate. Celebrate Jesus.
We worship you today. We exalt you. We thank you because you rose from the dead. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for dying and rising up and saving us. Thank you for not staying in the grave. Thank you for giving us the victory. So we just worship you today and we say thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. You have won the victory. Death could not hold you down.
you are the risen king the lamb of god the great i am wonderful savior we worship you right now jesus we honor you lord we thank you for the cross we thank you for the price you paid you were the lord hallelujah yes lord yes lord welcome to this resurrection sunday service I'm trusting that you're going to receive everything that God has for you. I believe as the Word of God goes forth, I believe that miracles will happen. I believe as the Word goes forth, the Word of God, somebody is going to meet that Word and something is going to happen. The Bible tells us in Isaiah 55 and verse 11, So shall my Word be that go forth, out of my mouth, it shall not return unto me void, but it shall accomplish that to which I please, and it shall prosper in the thing whereto I send it. So, what I will be doing today is um, I'll be sending the word of God, and you will be receiving it. And as you receive it, something miraculous will happen. Get ready, get ready, get ready. <laughs> Let us turn to the scriptures. I'm getting very excited here. Try and calm down, uh, Pastor Brian. Matthew 27, we're reading from verse 62 to the end. The next day, the one after preparation day, the chief priests... And the Pharisees went to Pilate and they said, Sir, we remember that while he was still alive, that deceiver said, after three days, I will rise again. So give the order for the, the tomb to be made secure until the third day. Otherwise, this deci his disciples may come and steal the body and tell the people that he has been raised from the dead. This last deception will be worse than the first. Take a guard, Pilate answered. Go make the tomb as secure as you know how. And so they went and they made the tomb secure by putting a seal on the stone and posting the guard. And then let's move over to Matthew chapter 28, reading from the first verse. After the Sabbath, at dawn, on the first day of the week, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary went to look at the tomb. There was a violent earthquake, for an angel of the Lord came down from heaven and going to the tomb, rolled back the stone and sat on it. His appearance was like lightning and his clothes were white as snow. The guards were so afraid of him that they shook and became like dead men. The angel said to the women, Do not be afraid, for I know that you are looking for Jesus who was crucified. He is not here. He has risen, just as he said. Come and see the place where he lay. Then go quickly and tell his disciples, He has risen from the dead and is going ahead of you into Galilee, there you will see him. Now I have told you. What I don't want to do today is reiterate the story of the death and the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Because 
I believe we, we all know the story. It's been told time and time again after so many years. But even if you don't know, I'll tell you quickly. He, he died on the Friday, but he rose again on the Sunday. Today, I want to focus on the power of the resurrection of Jesus Christ. You see, most people believe that Jesus existed. They, a lot of people believe that he was a good prophet. He was all of that. And he died a cruel death. But I've come to declare, so that you know, so that everybody knows that Jesus died, but he rose again on the third day. And his death shows us, come on, that death has has no power over us because death had no power over him. Come on. When I say over us, I'm talking about every born again believer in Jesus Christ. You carry that power. Hallelujah. It says, it tells us in, in, in the first book of Corinthians chapter 15 and verse 55, it, it says, Oh, death, where is your sting? Oh, grave, where is your victory? Where is it? <laughs> where is your power? Because, because from where I am standing, I cannot see it. Hello, is anybody there? <laughs> what excites me is this is that every born again believer in Jesus Christ, God has invested his power within them. You are powerful people. Everybody listening, born again believer, you are powerful. Come on. It tells us in Romans 8 and verse 11 that if the same spirit that raised Jesus from the dead, dwells in you, come on, he shall quicken, he that dwelleth in you shall quicken your mortal body. I, I, another version says that uh, uh, he who raised Christ from the dead will also give life to your mortal bodies because of his spirit who lives in you. This means that death cannot hold you. Sickness has no power over you. Actually, the Bible tells us uh, that God has given us authority over unclean spirits to drive them out and to heal every disease. <laughs> All you need to do is exercise what God has given you. We are powerful people. Know who you are and know what you carry. I know what I carry. I've seen, I've seen blind eyes opened just because I've exercised the power that is within me. I've declared eyes to be opened and they have opened. I've declared cancers to go from people's bodies and, and, and the cancers of God. I've heard of the dead being raised to life again. That one I'm still working on. But these powerful and miraculous occurrences do not happen because we are nice people or because we are good people, but they happen because the power of the risen Christ is within us. Come on, somebody. And, and, and this is only made possible because of the cross of Jesus Christ, because of his shed blood on that cross. There is power, wonder, working, power in the blood. We used to sing that and we still sing it today. Because that blood is still flowing. There is power. Wonder working power in the blood of Jesus. Hallelujah. A lady in our church told how her father passed away. He died. 
And the mother would not let him go. And so she laid on him for three days. I, I don't know whether she read the first book of Kings chapter uh, uh, 17 where e Elijah lays upon a, a dead uh, uh, child. Three times Elijah laid on him and he cried out to God. And after the third time, the boy comes back to life. I don't know whether this woman had, had read the story, but she laid upon her husband for three days and, and she cried out to God. And after three days, he woke up and he said, give me some food. <laughs> oh, that's not a coincidence. That did not just happen out of coincidence. That is the resurrection power of the risen Christ. There is power in the blood of Jesus to raise even the dead back to life. If, the, if, if, if Jesus can raise himself after three days, he can raise you to life again. You don't even need three days. He can do it instantly because that's who he is. God. Hallelujah. The resurrection power that is in Jesus is the same resurrection power that is in you. You can bring dead things to life again. You can heal the sick. You can perform miracles. Bear in mind that it's, it's not you that is doing it. No, sir. It's not you. But it is God who is doing it. You're just carrying his power. You are a carrier of the power of God. Hallelujah. There is something powerful, I believe, and unique about the third day. It was the first day of the week that Jesus rose again from the dead. But it was the third day after his death, the Sunday. And many times throughout the Bible we will see this sequence and repetitive appearance of the third. So in God's numerical order... Three represents uh, divine wholeness, completeness, and perfection. And it's interesting from what I've just told you that, 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 that Jesus rose again from the dead on the third day. From the story I told you about the woman in our church, her husband came back to life after three days also. The young boy, Elijah, laid on him and three times. And after three times, he came back to life. God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. That holy trinity, powerful trinity. That's the power of three. There is something powerful in the way God moves and in his order of doing things. And I don't want you to be under any misconceptions that by honing in on the number three, things are going to happen for you. Because God does not work that way. Don't look for God in the number three because he's not there. He is not governed by numbers or sequences. It doesn't work that way. Because he's God. He says in Isaiah 55 verses 8 to 9, he says, For my thoughts are not your thoughts. Neither are your ways my ways, declares the Lord. As the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. You cannot work out the way God moves. You will never be able to fathom the way God moves. The Bible tells us that he moves in mysterious ways, his wonders to perform. <laughs> Hallelujah. There are people who live by numbers. They live by numbers rather than the word of God. <laughs> I don't understand this. 
And, and I don't want you to be coming to me and saying, you know, Pastor Brian, um, you're saying something about three, three, uh, could three be my, my magic number? Perhaps if, if, if I use three, the threes on my, on my, la- my lottery slip, perhaps uh, I'm going to win. Perhaps, uh, oh, I saw, this, I saw this guy looking at me three times. Perhaps he's going to be my husband. A young man said to me uh, the other day, he says, Pastor, every time I, I look at my phone, he said, I, I'm seeing the number three. 313 and 33 and 23. He says, Pastor, uh, do, do you believe that God is trying to tell me something? I looked at him. His eyes were red. He looked tired. And I said to him, of course God is trying to tell you something. He said, get to sleep. Don't stay up at night. Stop going to bed at three o'clock in the morning. <laughs> I had to laugh. But, 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 but some people uh, live their lives by numbers. God does not work that way. In the story that we have just read, they crucified Jesus. They placed him in a tomb. And then they rolled a very large stone in front of that tomb. And then they sealed it. And then they put guards with weapons in front of the tomb. I I couldn't understand why would they put guards in front of a tomb that is sealed. And the man is dead. I, I, I don't understand it. I don't understand unless they knew something. Unless they knew something, they had read something, they had heard something about this Jesus. Unless they had heard and they seen that he had raised others from the dead. They had seen and heard him healing the sick, casting out demons, opening blind eyes. They must have seen it. They knew something because as he hung on the cross, a centurion who was standing by got a revelation of who Jesus was. Oh Lord, give us a revelation of who Jesus is. Hallelujah. It says in Mark 15, 39, and when the centurion who stood there in front of Jesus saw how he died, he said, surely... This man was the son of God. I've come to declare today that Jesus Christ is the son of God. Jesus Christ is God himself, the living one, the great I am, the mighty God. You cannot kill him. He laid his life down himself and the Bible says that he rose from the dead himself. Hallelujah, there is power, wonder, working power in the blood of the Lamb. Hallelujah, he is the Son of God. No matter what anybody might say or tell you. I wonder to myself if these guys were thinking that he's going to get out. And, and, and if I was there, maybe I would have thought the same thing. Because I'm, I would be thinking to myself, if, if he raised others from the grave, surely he can raise himself. If Jesus could raise Lazarus, who was dead for four days, with just three words, Lazarus, come out, <laughs> and raised him to life, surely God could raise himself. Jesus said of himself in the book of John, chapter 10, 17 to 18, he says, oh, I love this. He says, I lay down my life only to take it up again. No one take it from me. But I lay it down of my own accord. I have authority to lay it down and authority 
to take it up again. Those are the words of Jesus. What gets me excited, excited is this. The Bible says that if the same spirit. I love the word if. The small word, two letter word. Uh, it may be small, but it is powerful. It has big impact. If the same spirit, if this is the case, then this will happen. If the same spirit that raised Jesus from the dead dwells in me, it, it, he will quicken my mortal body. If the same spirit that raised Jesus from the dead dwells in me, then I can do what Jesus did because of the same spirit uh, that is within me. If I'm in the presence of death, then death can come to life. If there is sickness around me, then there is healing. If the gospel is preached, then there will be salvation. I can perform miracles because of the Spirit of God and the power of God that is within me. I've come to declare to somebody today that you shall have life and have it more abundantly. You might be lifeless. Actually, your life right now is feeling like death. You feel broken. The situation that you've been dealing with and looking at, it looks disastrous. It's dying. And it's been dead for a while now. So dead that it's smelling. The enemy has set God against you to make sure that you will never make it out. He set God to make sure you never come to anything. He's making sure that everything pertaining to you stay buried. But I hear a sound. I hear an earthquake. Something is rumbling. In this day that we're living right now, this that happened 2,000 years ago, there is still an earthquake. There is still a rumbling. Because God is not sending the angels this time. He is coming himself. And he's coming to move your oppression. He's coming to move your death. He's coming to roll the stone away. He's coming to heal you. He is coming to revive you. Yes, he is coming. The stone that has been holding you back in that tomb of death today, I declare in the name of Jesus, is being rolled away by God himself. I sense it right now, the power of the Holy Spirit. God is in the room. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm going to finish right there. Because I, I sense right now the Spirit of God moving in living rooms right across the world. As you're listening, as you're tuning in, God by His Spirit is doing something on this Resurrection Sunday. Somebody right now, as you hone in, is being healed by the power of the risen Christ. Somebody who is dead, dead, is coming back to life. Dead in spirit, you're coming back to life. Dead occasion, dead situations, coming back to life because of the power of the risen Christ. <laughs> Somebody who is sick, I declare, in the name of Jesus, God says, because of his blood shed on Calvary, you are healed. Hallelujah. I'm, I'm going to pray for you right now. In the name of Jesus, son of the living God, I declare across the world right now to every person under the sound of my voice, I declare the word of God in your situation. His word shall go forth and not return to him void, but it will accomplish that to which he is sending it. And in the name of Jesus, even every sick person that is listening, I declare right now healing in the name of Jesus. I declare right now miraculous accomplishment 
occurrences happening in the living rooms of people listening in the name of Jesus wherever you are tuning in I declare a breakthrough in Jesus name because the stone is rolled away because the stone has been removed because God is moving God is moving by his power hallelujah hallelujah I wonder if there is somebody you've heard the word of God and you want to you want to give Jesus your life if there is somebody you just want to break that curse over your life you want to receive salvation it is yours today I want you to repeat after me God I thank you for Jesus Christ I thank you father that he died for my sins your word declares that if I will confess with my mouth I will believe in my heart that God raised Jesus from the dead the Bible said that I am saved and so today I'm saved I thank you Jesus thank you for forgiving me of my sins amen if you have prayed that prayer I want you to get in touch with us at the end of this presentation you will see the details on screen thank you Jesus for the great things that you have done get ready get ready get ready this is resurrection Sunday amen thank you for joining us if you would like to support our ministry you're able to do that uh, you will see the details coming up on screen you can give your tithe or your offering at your leisure or you can visit our website for more details edencc.co.uk thank you so much for being a part of this ministry we want you to subscribe hit the subscribe button and you will get notification of everything that is happening here at Eden Church but not as you know it we're going to be back again on Sunday morning at 11 o'clock get ready get ready get ready it's going to be amazing God bless you